For over a century, a tradition of intercollegiate athletic excellence has been strong in central Nebraska. This is an inside look at that tradition. This is the University of Nebraska Kearney Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star B. From our family to yours. Hello and welcome to another edition of Loper Review. I'm your host, Randy Bushcutter. As we begin a new calendar year, it's also a new semester here at UNK, and it uh, is the spring semester in name only. That's why we'll be inside this entire week, and we'll begin by taking a look back in time. We'll get reacquainted with a former Loper basketball standout who will go from scoring points on the court to scoring donations for the school. We'll go way back in time for our first ever edition of Antelope 101, a look at the history of athletics on the Kearney campus. And in our senior spotlight, we'll talk to a member of the women's basketball team who decided to stay close to home for her college career. And it all begins literally with a look at the face that many have never seen, but a voice most of you have heard on the radio for the past decade. Dave Jenner, the voice of the Lopers, is next on deck. It's a busy schedule, and we'll get right to it after this break on Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. You know, Dave Jenner didn't follow the traditional path to become a radio sports announcer, but if you know Dave, well, he's not that traditional to begin with. For a long time, he's been on the morning show on Hits 106 as Little Dave. Well, now for the past decade, he's been the voice of the Lopers. Well, the best part is, is the kids and the coaches, uh, the relationships that you have with the kids and the coaches make it all worthwhile. It makes me smile every time I see one of the kids and now I'm to the point where I'm seeing some of the guys that, and girls that played here, the, their kids, it's not going to be too long and they're going to be here too. So it's nice to be able to see those people on the street and say, oh, I was there when you hit that big shot. Dave was a professional guitar player for several rock bands in his younger days, and even a country band briefly. Something he would like to forget. But it was a lifestyle that lost its appeal as he got a little older, and couldn't be happier with the direction that he chose to turn. Well, but I was always a sports fan. I can remember when I was really, really young, getting an opportunity to see a lot of games. I was really blessed that my Dad was able to take me to a lot of games, what took me to uh, a lot of softball, a lot of baseball, basketball games. And we had a lot of reasons in my hometown to go see some of the teams. I, I never do get to hear what Dave says, uh, uh, only from my, you know, only from people that know me uh, that like to listen to Dave. My mom, for one, loves to listen to Dave. Uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy Dave. I, I think Dave. Uh, does a great job for us, uh, uh, you know, broadcasting our sports uh, events. Uh, but I also think Dave is a big time fan of Loper Athletics and I, I appreciate Dave for that. One thing that is kind of interesting, uh, the last five or six years, Dave has traveled with our basketball team. So when we go on the road, uh, 
we get to see a lot of Dave because he's on the bus on all those long trips. And I would say the biggest strength that Dave Jenner has, and, and uh, of all the people I've ever met in my life, I have never, ever seen another person that is more optimistic than Dave Jenner. And, and it's, it's just a great quality. It doesn't matter how bad things are going. Dave always has a smile on his face and, and can find something positive. So the thing I most respect about Dave Jenner is he is the most optimistic individual I have ever met in my life. Steve Altmyer did it for a uh, hundred years and, and everybody knew Steve and he was the voice of the Lopers, you know, and I can remember uh, many times driving back from a recruiting trip and listening to Steve Altmyer talk about a basketball game and it felt like you were there, you could see it in your head. Uh, but, you, you know, you had to get used to Dave's style and Dave himself, but uh, we've done that. We've come to love Dave just as much as we did Steve, and, uh, you know, again, we're, we're excited to have him. So, well, Steve was a great mentor. He taught me the right way to do things, uh, showing up early. Now, you don't show up five minutes before a game and then throw things on. And showed me that, you know, the preparation and maybe toned me down a little bit because even as loud as I am now, I was louder before. I always find Dave to be very well prepared. I mean, he knows the names of our players. He's an intimate, you know, he, he, like I said, Dave's a fan. And uh, Dave learns a lot about our players. And he knows a lot about them. So uh, I've always thought he did, has always come prepared for our interviews. He knows he's already talked to the opposing coach. He knows about their players. He knows about, you know, the, the, the guys on their team that we have to defend and, and uh, you know, kind of try to contain. So, uh, you know, it's, and uh, he's always got some humor going too. So that's always fun. Well, there's a lot of preparation that goes into it. I think some people think you just show up. Well, I kill a tree just about every game with notes, and I go over those notes. And even though I don't need them there, I have them there as kind of a security blanket. But once the game actually tips off and you start to get into the flow, it, 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 that's what gets me going. And I don't know if anybody's ever noticed, but right before tip off, I can't stand still. The reason why is because I'm ready to go. Dave loves the kids and the kids love Dave and, and he just hopes, uh, he just continually hopes and, and wishes nothing but the best for people involved with UNK and it's a wonderful quality. You know, uh, and Dave is always complimentary of the kids and he does get to see them in a, in a light that a lot of people don't get to see them at a restaurant or around a hotel or you know, uh, you know, getting off uh, the bus and, and going to, into a, a convenience store even. So Dave gets to see that bird's eye view of how our kids behave themselves and he's always been very complimentary. But I'll tell you, when we get on the road, we get to the hotel, you don't see Dave much. I mean, I think Dave's in his room watching TV and listening to rock and roll and, and uh, you don't see him till game time. The travel is hard. The travel is always hard. It's, it's arduous, but it's part of what you do. And let's face it, there's nothing that comes easy, and if you want to do something bad enough, you're gonna take those distractions and kind of throw them aside and say, you know, this good outweighs this bad. Some of the places that I enjoy going to, I, I've enjoyed every time that we have been at uh, Fort Hay State. Uh, it's a great environment, especially for basketball games. Uh, I've always kind of enjoyed uh, going to Central Missouri. Uh, I, I like going to uh, Northwest Missouri, and the people have been really nice. And that's the one thing about, you know, I talk about the relationship with the athletes. It's also with the other coaches, the other players, and sometimes some of the fans, too. You can hear Dave's call of football games on Y102, which is at 102.3 in the Tri-City area, as well as basketball games on KGFW 1340. And both radio stations, of course, are online, so you can listen to games wherever you are. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll go from a former Loper big man who goes from scoring points to scoring donations for UNK. His story is coming up next on Loper Review. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information.
programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. Well, former basketball big man Dusty Jura did not start his career here at UNK. He played at Division I Northern Iowa and then came to the Lopers as a little bit of a change of pace. Well, now he's back on campus five years after graduating in a different role. This time he's helping to raise funds for the university's athletic department and for the College of Education through the University Foundation. You know, I, I had played a couple years over in Australia and then um, got back from there and kind of was trying to uh, search around for what to do. My wife got a job in uh, Holdridge originally to teach Spanish and, um, you know, I was just kind of looking around. I actually signed on with a medical device company called Stryker and was selling medical devices for two years and uh, around western Nebraska and had, had a pretty decent time doing it. Unfortunately, it was long hours and just kind of a kind of a, a different gig. So um, the foundation, um, you know, I, I think I was approached by Joey Cochran said that they had a position opened um, for the director of development with athletics and also college of education and I was obviously intrigued by it so I got a hold of him and he got a hold of Lucas Dart and went through the interview process and was fortunate enough to to be asked to become a member of the foundation. I actually was doing athletics and uh, I just didn't have quite maybe enough time to deal with um, all the opportunities in athletics and thus we had a few staff changes and decided to kind of shuffle the deck a little bit. Uh, so Dusty Jura is on board with us now. Dusty is working with the College of Education and with athletics and we think it's really a good fit for him with his background uh, as a former student athlete, uh, somebody who has a lot of relationships in the community already. And so it really made perfect sense to make the change right now. Um, and with Paul Polinski coming on board as athletic director, we knew that there was going to need to be uh, a greater external focus. That was going to be a goal of his. And uh, so it's kind of the perfect storm uh, to make the changes right now. And uh, we're very excited about the direction we're headed. You transferred from Northern Iowa. At what point did you kind of think, hey, this is a pretty good deal here? I felt like that on my visit, really. I mean, um, you know, I remember being in Northern Iowa and. Um, I enjoyed basketball, but it, it was a rough year, and I remember seeing UNK having a lot of success. You know, they obviously made the Elite Eight um, the year that I was in Northern Iowa, and I followed the progress. And uh, I mean, geez, the community seemed so involved and engaged. And um, I saw the the Elite Eight film and on my visit here, and when I was on my visit here, I met a ton of great people. And I, I mean, coming from a Division One program in Northern Iowa, you know, it was amazing that the the amount of engagement by the community and the school around athletics, specifically basketball. I mean, it was better here at a Division II than it was at Division I. Fundraising and alumni relations work is all about relationships. And, uh, you know, when you can hire somebody who has uh, a very easy personality, uh, somebody who knows how to relate to people, uh, who, who can be a good listener, um, and then somebody on top of that who understands the university, who's been here, who's walked uh, alongside many of the, the former athletes and other alums who've come through here, um, along with somebody who, um, you know, he's, he's somebody that people know. And that greatly, greatly helps in building those relationships when there's a little name recognition going into it. And so you, you combine all of those things, the skill set that he has, uh, some of the intangibles, uh, you know, he's, he's already hit the ground running, and uh, we're very excited about the future. Well, first off, again, I mean, I hate, to, I hate to reiterate it, but it's, you know, UNK, so it's easy from that standpoint. And the second, I mean, I just love talking to people, and I love talking to people that have, you know, common uh, interests as me, and it's pretty easy to find people that are that way in Kearney. Um, I mean, everybody is, you know, uh, we're Midwesterners. We like to, you know, we like to work hard, and we like to have fun, and we like our sports, and... It's pretty, pretty easy to engage people, but it, it'll be a tough road. The only thing I can do is just keep working hard. 
We wish Dusty the best of luck in his new job, and we also hope that you at home will contact him to help out the university's athletic program and the College of Education. Right now, it's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, a young basketball player who bucks the trend and stays close to home for her college career. Her story is coming up next on our Senior Spotlight. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today. Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back now for one of our favorite segments, our Senior Spotlight. And today we'll be sitting down with Nicole Arp, a senior on the women's basketball team. Nicole, good to see you. You, you too. And Nicole, you're kind of a unique uh, feature for us. You're the first Carneyite, the first Carney High graduate that we've had on our Senior Spotlight. Talk about the decision to stay at home. A lot of times college kids want to spread their wings a little bit. Talk about the decision to stay at home and play for the Lopers. Um, I thought my junior year, I definitely wanted to go away from home and I wanted to go out and explore. But my senior year, um, before basketball season started, my dad got cancer. So I knew right then that I wanted to be at home because family is so important to me. So that was like the main factor of my decision. What has been, I don't want to say a surprise because you didn't really know him, you didn't have that relationship. What have been some of the real positive aspects about playing for Coach Cheney? Uh, just the type of person he is. I love playing for him because he would do anything for us. So just giving him that back is I would do anything for him. And when I go out there, I will do my best for him. At times, it's been difficult to do your best because of some injuries. You had a, a fair amount of injuries your sophomore year. Talk about battling through that. And, and uh, you know, right now you even have a little boot on to kind of slow you down a, a little bit. But that's that's going to heal. Talk about battling those ongoing injuries. Uh, my sophomore year, I had a high sprained ankle and I was out for eight weeks. Um, luckily, it was preseason, so I only missed a few games. I missed like the Husker game and maybe a couple more. Um, but just coming back, it was my first major injury ever, so I was definitely hesitant and like scared that I would re injure it. Um, so I would say it's really hard to like come back and really go out and give 100% right away just because of afraid of hurting it again. Is it, is it the fear or the pain that really kind of slows you down? The fear the fear of re-injuring it. How long does it take to work your way past that? Um, I, would, I would probably say like after a game or two realizing that nothing's really going to happen, that it's just my fear and I need to get over it, so. Kind of like walking on ice. Once yes. you know it's strong enough to hold you, you're gonna be okay. Exactly. The last few years, uh, the women's basketball team hasn't quite reached that pinnacle that obviously you would hope for. Um, how has that been for you in terms of, you really kind of had an expectation maybe of being in a contention for conference titles, that sort of thing. Talk about how that's meant for you and, and what kind of legacy you hope to leave for players coming after you. Uh, it's definitely been a little frustrating. It has its ups and downs. It's really hard um, not having a winning record and going out there every day and working as hard as you can. Um, I think one thing that us girls do really good is just staying together and still going out and working hard and trying our best and still making the best of it. Sounds like you'll be staying in the neighborhood for a while. Are you going to be, you know, when you see success for the Loper women's program down the road, 
are you still going to be able to have a fair amount of pride in saying we kind of kept that going? We kind of our work kind of led to this. Yes, I definitely will. What sort of things do you think you're leaving behind that they can build on? Um, I think just attitude and the hard work. Um, my type of game is a fast-paced game, and I know that the girls that are under me really like the fast-paced game, so I hope to leave that behind and um, still have the girls, you know, want to play that fast-paced game. It's a lot of fun to watch, too, by the way. Um, what, are some things that, what are some things you like to do in your spare time? Basketball is the only thing in your life. We know that. What are some other things that you enjoy besides your family, of course? Um, friends. I love being around friends. Um, I also have a boyfriend in Colorado, and I love going out to Colorado and hiking and doing anything outdoors there. About a month left in the season, about a month left in your, your, your basketball career. Have you thought about that very much or would you prefer not to think about it until it's over? Um, the only thing I've really thought about is how fast my four years have gone. It's just flown by. I don't like, it's hard to remember the last three years because of how fast it's gone. So I try not to think about it too much because I'm really trying to enjoy this last, last month and get these next seven games that we have. Are there some thoughts that you, you know you're going to be able to take with you? What are some things that come to mind? Uh, just the friendships and um, how much I've grown. I feel like um, I've been a captain the last two years and um, being able to handle different, different situations and being a leader is what I'll definitely be able to take with me. What have you enjoyed the most about that leadership role? Probably just having all the girls look up to me and knowing that like I'm making the difference and um, that they all want my opinion when things matter. Obviously, you're a student athlete. We've been talking a lot about the athletics. Let's talk about the student aspect. What are some classes that you enjoyed? What's your major? What's your plans? Uh, my major is special education and elementary education. And I love all my education classes. I enjoy them. Um, we do some fun projects. And after this year, I'll still be going to school for another year and then hopefully becoming a first or second grade teacher. Um, I think I'll probably eventually want to leave Nebraska and go to a big city, but we'll see when the time comes. What is it about first and second grade? I just enjoy little kids and those are the ages that make me smile the most and make me enjoy the most. So I haven't really been in the schools to see what I really want to do yet, but right now it's first or second grade. Nicole, appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank you. It's time for us to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll begin a new class here with a new semester. We'll look at Antelope 101 when we continue right after this. Loper Review is brought to you by Nebraska Star Beef. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information. Programming is made possible in part by the Museum of Nebraska Art in Kearney. From the artist explores, through the modern era, to the art of today, Mona tells the story of Nebraska through the art of Nebraska. Whether you're online at mona.unk.edu or on our doorstep, there's always something new to see and do. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. Welcome back. You know, in previous semesters, we got you caught up on the history of the MIAA conference with MIAA 101. Well, now, new semester, new class. This time, we're going to focus on the history of athletics here at UNK. Welcome to Antelopes 101. I am Professor Page, and I will be filling in for Professor Kelsey as she is on sabbatical this semester. Here on Antelopes 101, we'll be looking back on the past 108 years of athletics on the campus that is now known as UNK. 
Ironically, although this class is called Antelopes 101, the first half dozen years there were teams representing the school they were called the Normalites. Based on the school being called the Normal School of the West when the doors opened in 1905. Football and women's basketball were the first teams that year with baseball following in the spring of 1906. That first football team was coached by W.E. Allen, who would also coach the women's basketball team later that term and then start the men's basketball program a year later. That first football team did not win a game, losing five and tying one. The first win would come in the fall of 1906 when the Normalites defeated Lexington High School 6-0. The field was located on the south edge of campus where Thomas Hall is now located. But at least the football team had a place on campus to practice and play. The first women's basketball team practiced and played at the local armory. Their first season consisted of five games, two each against Kearney High and Grand Island High. The fifth game was in Kearney against what is now Peru State, and the visitors made the train trip worth the effort with a 26-19 win. Following the game, the Peru players were guests at a reception featuring poetry readings, music, and refreshments. The baseball team started to play games in the spring of 1906 and continued into the summer. Playing for Coach O.W. Neal, they got off to a very strong start, finishing with a record of 13-1. However, none of the opponents that year were from other colleges, but were town teams from around the area. The following year, they were 13-3, and, and then in 1908 were 10-6. That 1908 team was the first to go against other colleges, although several town teams were still on the schedule as well. Three sports and almost three years of competition and we're already out of time. Next month on Antelopes 101, the Normalites are no more and the antelopes take the field. And a man named George Van Buren lays down the foundation of excellence that continues today. I look forward to being here with you next time on Antelopes 101. Well, next month, of course, we'll have another edition of Antelope 101 as we take a look at the rich history of athletics here at UNK. Well, that is our show for this month. We want to thank you for joining us. We'll do it again next month. Until then, see ya and go Lopers. You're watching the Nebraska Star Beef Loper Review. The Nebraska Star Beef Pure Promise. No antibiotics, no hormones, humane treatment of animals, USDA choice or higher, a price that is always fair, and satisfaction guaranteed. At Nebraska Star Beef, we pay close attention to what we feed our families and are passionate about delivering beef that you can feel good about serving to your family. Visit us at NebraskaStarBeef.com for more information.